Tonight on Country Squire Radio, crisis alert. Are all the Virginias on the planet completely removed? Is this the end of McClellan? No, no. <laughs> Not to bury the lead, but one way or the other, we're talking about the net tonight. We also have a pipe quest of the week about uh, making your own casings, making your own toppings for your own personal tobacco blends, uh, as well as quick fire questions, listener feedback, and more starting right now on Country Squire Radio. Welcome, Country Squire. <laughs> Lately, <laughs> lately, I've been having a hard time You've with that transition. trouble with that, man. I don't know yeah. what it is. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, take it from the top. Take it from the top. Welcome to Country Squire Radio. I'm Bo. And I'm John David. JD. Hey, Bo. Good evening, man. Good evening to you, <laughs> sir. Oh, man. How are you? I'm doing I'm doing all right, but what, uh, what's up with you? Uh, y- you look at me like maybe I, I look disturbing or yeah, something. Well, no, is, you, is, every, is everything okay? You know, I look at you, and here we are at 2018. You know, right. Some time's gone by, but you in right. particular, you look just like as if you are just 24 hours uh, to oh, maintain. I see where this is going. Oh, do you? I see where this is going. Yes. Aha! Oh, man. It's my birthday. <laughs> it's your birthday. <laughs> Almost my birthday. Almost your birthday. Oh, and you broke your hat. hat. <laughs> There's a backup hat. Oh, man. They're all breaking. Ah, let's see. There we go. These were clearly made Look for at grown that. men. <laughs> <laughs> these these were made, uh, yeah, for people with really fat hobbit heads. There we go. All right, well, well yours at least uh, hung on there, and we'll put hung this on one. a little bit. No, it's 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 gone too. Uh, it's, but anyway, it's, it's toast. Yep. I feel hey, like dude. you did that on purpose. Hey, Happy dude, birthday. it's uh, it's it's my birthday, man. Yeah. yeah. So uh, thanks, brother. Yeah. I appreciate Happy it. Happy birthday. No, there is you. The, the, no. Happy what, birthday. This song died with Marilyn Monroe. But see, this is the thing in the. Ours, ours is probably one of the only podcast audiences that'll get the reference. <laughs> no, you're, that, that, that is that is true. No, dude, thanks. Uh, yeah, I, 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 you know, over the years, have started to just not uh, make as much of a deal about my birthday as uh, you know you do when you're a kid. Which and is I, a I guess shame. It just kind of happens when you get older a little bit. But um, yeah, man, 34 tomorrow and uh, January 9th. Where um, you know, it's funny. My my birthday always landed on on a time of the year when like kids were still out for the holidays. Yeah. And so I always was, you know, growing up a little, a little bitter about that because like, <laughs> you know, when, when you're a kid and you have your birthday, like in March, you know, unless it's during spring break, like typically you come to class and like, you know, someone says it's your birthday and everyone makes a big deal out of it. And all these kids are there. It's like, Oh, it's his birthday. And like, maybe your mom <laughs> brings you cupcakes to school or something, you know? Um, and, 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 you know, my birthday just always landed during, uh, during winter break. And so I just, uh, I was always at home. It was cold. Um, you know, I, I had already, such a curmudgeon, even at I, a young I, age. I know I'd, I heard, I'd already gotten like these presents for Christmas. And so it was like, you know, man, man you know, I, I, I don't know. It was just this, uh, it, it, but now I'm, I'm really starting to appreciate the fact that my birthday is, uh, is in January. And, um, you know, it's uh, just to kind of pull the curtain back a little bit. It's one of those times of year where, um, you know, it, it, it can be kind of depressing just because mm. it's so cold and it's, yeah. you know, it, it, everyone's broke from the holidays and it's, uh, it, you know, you're trying to, you know, work off all that, you know, fruit cake that you ate and all that. <laughs> you know? And, uh, and it's just, it's good to have a bright spot in the middle of a, a kind of a difficult month. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's good, man. Thanks. Well, well happy Thanks. birthday Thank to you, brother. Man. I appreciate uh, that. I really you're, do. you're finally turning 21 and I think, uh, I know. <laughs> we, we could not, he's happy. old enough to rent a car now. That's great. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, man, we want to, uh, of course, uh, let some folks know that uh, in the coming weeks here, we've got a, a special episode coming up. Um, you know, we, we've got a lot of different series that we do from time to time. We are continuing on our pipe culture series, talking about pipe smoking archetypes. Uh, now, specifically, we're looking at the farmer and the aristocrat. Dadgummit, I'm it, still it, doing it. It, aren't is, I? it is an aristocrat. We're talking about aristocrats, but also the aristocrat. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Well, those those two I'm excited about it. those two pipe smoking archetypes. So we want to get your stories in, your feedback, your thoughts as we prepare for this particular pipe culture episode. It's really a time for us to turn the mics over to you, uh, so that we can tell the uh, the, the stories that uh, that you guys have in, in relation to kind of thinking about what these archetypes are and, and what you know from fiction, from history, from personal experience. Uh, that's what we'd like to hear from you. Uh, you can send that in at show at countrysquareradio.com. We also want to uh, encourage you to go to countrysquareradio.com where you can participate in the corn cob uh, 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 bidding auction that's yeah, going on. Right our, our Missouri Mearsham sponsored corn cob, uh, custom corn cob holiday extravaganza bidding auction. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, obviously, uh, for folks that have been keeping up with this, we had some awesome uh, custom corn cob pipes that were made for our uh, yearly, our new contest that we that we did in December. And, um, 
man, the bid, the bidding is away. The it's, bidding it's, is yeah, on. it's 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 going. There's actually uh, several several bids that are in, and uh, man, some some people really want those pipes. It's I'm telling exciting. you, man, <laughs> it's great. It's going for a great cause too. We're raising these funds for the Ronald McDonald House. Uh, it's not only do you get a a really co cool and quality custom corn cob pipe that you're not going to find anywhere else, but you're also uh, helping out a great great organization that does some amazing things. So uh, if you've not done so already, go to CountrySquireRadio.com. Check out the corn cobs. You've got until this coming Sunday to get those bids in and we will announce the winners on next week's live broadcast on Monday, but you've got until Sunday at midnight here, uh, central standard time. So let's get That's those right. bids in. That's now, right. I'm rushing through kind of the, the, you know, the homework or not the homework, but the housekeeping items Yeah, because tonight's a, a big episode, man. We, we have only, I think ever once in the history of this podcast had kind of some breaking news type of stuff. Happening. Yeah. It kind of come out like, you know, the day of or something when we record. Yeah. So it, it doesn't happen too often. Yeah. As, I mean, like, and, and really this is kind of taking things to a new level and in many respects, this is the first time probably that you're getting from country Squire radio, some hard hitting journalism with a lot of like, you know, some, <laughs> some, some of those back room conversations and all that kind of stuff we, uh, well we I, got I, the details we got the dirt we got the we got the uh, the skinny, uh, the skinny, the rundown. <laughs> we got it all. Oh, oh, Gumshoe JD is going to bring you all the uh, all the the accurate information that you need. So we, I'm just, I'm just kidding. Actually, you probably heard all this stuff <laughs> by by now. Uh, you know, here at eight thirty Central Time on Monday night. But uh, but yeah, we are excited. To talk yeah. About so originally we had kind of an episode plan that got pushed back to next week because John David uh, messaged me early today. He was like, "Hey, we got to talk about." Virginia's. We got to talk about what's going on with McClellan. Uh, he, you know, and, and kind of what we, th so you, you started getting these phone calls yesterday, this morning. When, when did the, uh, when did the news start coming in? Well, so yeah. Okay. And I guess we're diving in, huh, Bo? We're just straight head for yeah, head, okay. uh, head, head first into the, uh, yeah. onto the breach. Or so whatever. yeah, we, um, you know, this morning, um, on, on our side of the counter, we kind of knew some of this was coming, uh, over the past, you know, several weeks, we had had some heads up and some rumblings, uh, just because we, you know, are in regular contact with some of these companies, but, but weren't for sure. And, uh, today, a lot of this, uh, a lot of our fears were confirmed, uh, McClelland, uh, which of course, you know, we talk about, uh, regularly here on country Squire radio, no secret. I'm a fanboy. love McClelland. Oh, McClelland's um, a giant in the industry. They are a giant in the industry. Certainly in America, they make, uh, you know, some of the best tobaccos, they're, they're kind of, you know, bread and butter or those rich, uh, velvety Virginias that we just know and love. And, um, tonight I'm smoking one named 5100. Uh, it's our, it's Ooh. red cake, Virginia, which is very, uh, very popular. It's, it's probably their most, um, uh, mo or their best selling bulk tobacco that they, that they sell. And, um, and, and they came out today and announced that they aren't going to be able to make it anymore. All right. So 5100. Yeah. Yeah, it, um, it's it's uh it's it's gone. It yeah. is it is gone. It's gone. And yeah. yet you're smoking. This could be your child's college fund, and you're smoking it because the, the value of that bowl <laughs> just skyrocketed. That bowl right there. Um, yeah, it, it's uh I, it was it was a decision I, I had to make. I was like, you know what? Tonight, in honor of uh in of on, in honor of our our great uh cake Virginia friend, we yeah. are we are gonna uh, load up a bowl. Matter of fact, if you're uh, watching live uh, on our top shelf here, where the fifty one hundred jar used to sit. Uh, there is a a blank spot now that we have put a glass of whiskey in because we we honor it uh, we honor a, a venerated tobacco with a nice single malt scotch and so um, anyway it's uh yeah it's, we it's pour some a, out for it but it's good quality scotch no that's right that's right yeah, <laughs> yeah. We, uh, the, the scotch will be consumed by uh, by yeah. someone yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, tonight so um, man yeah so a big day I actually had uh, this morning a bunch of folks call uh, just from all over the country they were looking for. Uh, looking, you know, to see if we had any 5100 left and we had already taken it off the shelf. And uh, we still have a few things we have to do with the little bit that we do have left. And so, um, but uh, but anyway, folks, you know, immediately took this news uh, as uh, McClelland going out of business. The sky is falling. Right, right. Chicken uh, Little has know, been let out into the tobacco shop. Absolutely. And so we just, uh, you know, immediately had folks that were, um, you know, concerned that, oh my gosh, well, the, McClellan's out of business. We're, we, we're talking Frogmorton. We're talking, um, you know, all the great Virginias and Orientals they do Christmas, you know, holiday, of course, Christmas cheer had to be discontinued last year, but, um, you know, holiday spirit, old dog, blue mountain, uh, or, or Balkan blue, you know, just, you name it on and on all these, you know, incredible tobaccos they've come out with over the years. And, um, and, and the, the good news is, and we'll, you know, continue to talk about this throughout the, the, the segment tonight, but, um, McClellan's not out of business. They're not, but, um, they, they are experiencing probably, a, you know, what they would consider the most critical challenge they've had since their company, Man. uh, has, has formed. And, and that is a, a, a drought 
in uh, high quality red Virginia tobacco. Man, yeah. okay, so, in, in in the United States. So was fifty one hundred? I mean, was that just straight up that red Virginia tobacco? Yeah. So it, it's a it's a blend of Virginias and uh, and you know they if you talk to Mike and again uh, I had some great conversations today with with uh, Mary McNeil and Mike McNeil. Again, I, you know I've said this so many times on the show, but this is one of our favorite companies. Like when you when you call to order tobacco, you're talking to the person that either blended the tobacco or like, you know, you know, age the tobacco themselves. I mean, that, that mm. you're talking to that person, right? Like it's, it's just, these are people you want to support. Their hands have been on. Yeah. The I mean, they, they really have, they've, yeah. they've tested it. These are the people that, uh, you know, are the folks that, that determine which, which tobaccos uh, live and which ones die. I mean, they're just, they're just really, um, really the best. And so, um, yeah, um, you just kind of go through the day, you know, we, we had, um, you know, I, I got on the phone this morning and I spoke with Mary, who, uh, of course, is the president of the company. Uh, Mary McNeil, uh, she does a lot of the tasting herself, uh, is in really instrumental in uh, the blending process. Design work, too. Um, the design, all the artwork for their beautiful tins and everything that they do. She's incredibly instrumental in that. And so uh, we chatted uh, quite a bit this morning. Um, and uh, and then later this afternoon, I was lucky enough to talk to, to Mike McNeil. Uh, Mike, of course, is the you know, is the guy that is, is the blender. I mean, he's the, he's the head blender at McClelland and, um, and, and, and arguably, you know, uh, he, he wouldn't admit to this matter of fact, he would fight you probably to the death that, that <laughs> if, if I said this to him, he'd probably fight me to tell me I was wrong. But, uh, but he's arguably the, you know, the best that America has ever put out. Oh man. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 you know, so anytime you interact with him, uh, as ornery and crotchety as he is, uh, you, you're a, you're a blessed person, you know, cause, uh, cause he's just, he's a great, he's a great man. So, um, but anyway, you know, so talking to Mary this morning, the, um, you know, the state of this, uh, leaf in general, uh, is, is just really, um, you know, it's, it, it we're, we're in a tough spot here and, it, and it's a perfect storm if you want to, you know, know the, know the truth about it. So we've kind of been clued in on this for a few weeks on our side of the counter, um, because we use a lot of McClellan products to blend our tobaccos, right? Sure. Yeah. And so, you know, as we blending tobaccos again, um, you know, it, even looking on the shelf behind us here, a lot of these, uh, a lot of these, um, jars that you see, if you're watching live, they include tobaccos that come from, uh, you know, different, different companies, you know, McClellan, Cornell and Deal, Mac Barron, uh, you know, Lane, Sutliff, on and on and on. And, uh, and of course, McClellan is a big part of that because we, we tend to lean towards the more premium stuff. And so, um, they have, you know, they essentially have been having trouble sourcing this particular red Virginia leaf. <coughs> and as they were looking for ways to replicate this particular blend and, 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 you know, really the stuff that, that goes into making 5,100, the special tobacco that it is, yeah. Um, you know, they just kept running into these roadblocks. And so uh, they tried several iterations of basically a, um, a backup recipe. So, you know, something where they could go out, get some other leaf, uh, try to take that leaf and do something with it in order to, to you know, modify the recipe for 5100. Make, so make that, some margarine instead of butter. Type yeah, situation. but, you know, but but something that was, you know, they felt like was the quality where, you know, okay, the, you know, they could say, okay, we're changing the formula a little bit, but this is something we're proud to put out. Right, right, And right. Uh, so they'd gone through several iterations and this, you know, they had just kind of failed, uh, not come up with the with the right combination. And so uh, the the straw that broke the camel's back was this this weekend, actually, just, just yesterday. And, um, you know, they had tried, they went down to South Carolina, tried uh, all these leaves that they'd kind of set aside and, and you know, were letting Mary up to, to really, um, you know, see if this new new formula would take. And, uh, you know, at, just talking to Mike and, and Mary, it was so funny. Just, you know, I, I could imagine them sitting in this room. They smoked this tobacco out of every type of pipe that you could imagine, you know, like, <laughs> right, you know, right. you know to several different clay pipes, uh, you know. Uh, Meerschaum pipes, fresh briar pipes that had never been smoked, on and on, um, to try to get just the the purest flavor that they could, and um, and this was kind of their last shot at at you know replicating this this tobacco, um, and um, and and they 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 weren't satisfied. They just Ooh, they weren't satisfied. Man. So yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it, 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 I, they wanted. You know, I said, what is something we could communicate to you know our listenership and and the pipe community at large that would just kind of, you know, what, what, what can we communicate to them that y'all might want us to, 
pass along, uh, you know, just from your side, uh, you know, coming from um, the, you know, the company line. And they said, you know, look, we're, we're, we're in business. It's, it's always funny talking with, uh, with Mike and, and, and Mary, because Mary is, is so tender and sweet and like really positive and, you know, affirming. And Mike is like, you know, is, is like, everything's going to hell <laughs> and he owns it, man. I love right, Mike. Right. He's, he's so great. I, I was really, uh, you know, honored to get to talk to him for as long as I did, but uh, you know, it's just funny because, you know, when you do talk to him, you're really aware of the challenges that the pipe industry are up against. Um, and so, you know, it, it, the, the moral of the story is though, that uh, McClellan, they're in business, they're not going anywhere. Um, but they are up against a serious problem. Uh, in, in Mary, uh, in Mary's words, she said they're wounded, but not dead, <laughs> which, uh, you know, which was, which was comforting to hear in some respect, but, but they do have a serious problem. Um, and that is that the, uh, the aged mellow leaf that is so, uh, incredibly important to the finest Virginia blends in the world, um, is just no longer consistently available and, and is used up. All right. So perspective wise, cause it's not just 51 that's gone. Like, like, that's right. I mean, this, yeah. this is something that trickles out. And yeah. It, it, the, the 51 was kind of the newsmaker, you know, 5,100 was kind of the, everyone was like, well, you know, that's, it's the most popular red Virginia on the market. And so everyone went nuts, but, but they, they're experiencing this on a broad variety of, uh, of tobaccos, uh, that they have on their lineup, including a lot of their bulk aromatic, uh, blends, which people find, uh, you know, very, very, um, uh, very good. I mean, so, well, let me just ask this. Well, no, 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 let's ask this. Percentage-wise, like, like, what would you kind of estimate percentage-wise? Does this impact the? I actually don't know, and I, I wouldn't want to speculate Fair to enough. be honest. Fair yeah, enough. just uh, you know, out of respect for McClellan, because I don't know, uh, I don't know what you know what percentage of their products are going to be uh, affected. But I, I can tell you that you know, as of right now. Um, this is much more, much more affecting their bulk stuff than it is their tin stuff. Mary, okay. Mary, Mary was very clear on that. And so, okay. and so a lot of their uh, bulk tobaccos are the things that are going to be immediately affected. Okay. So we're talking, uh, you know, some of their great aromatics. We're talking, uh, you know, different, uh, you know, different Virginia mixtures. And then of course, 5,100, which, uh, which everyone got really upset about, um, you know, they've got kind of this stockpile of tobacco that they're sitting on, um, you know, and, uh, the FDA, you know, Mike was clear. He said, you know, honestly, the, you know, they haven't really come in and done a lot of stuff with them so far. Um, and so they've, but they've moved e even in spite of that, just because the FDA kind of scare, you know, happened last year, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, and we think eventually it will happen, you know, that, you know, they've, they've been moving through a lot of product. And so they just kind of got wiped out with a lot of this, uh, a lot of this, you know, people are just stocking up. Pipe smokers are sure, stocking up because sure. we don't know what the what the future is going to hold. So, um, but but we can't get this aged mellow leaf that is so um, so important. In the past, they would have bought this leaf, um, and and it would have sat basically in storage in a barn uh, down there in, in the hill country in in South Carolina. Um, you know, it would have sat there for uh, you know a couple summers to to marry up and to to go through a couple of sweating seasons where, it, you know, it goes to that real hot summer and mild winter, uh, just to, to, uh, get those tobaccos nice and, uh, nice and married up. They would just sit there and, and that process was so important. Um, and, and they just don't have enough to do that any longer. So, um, and then also, you know, if they weren't able to find the appropriate leaf to go out, um, and, and, and be able to do that, they, a lot of times they could find, you know, good, aged uh, Virginia leaf on the secondary market. And so they might work with a broker, um, you know, to find leaf from other sources and then be able to, uh, you, you know, to have a, a quality product that they would feel comfortable putting in their blends. But, um, you know, those, those sources don't exist anymore. And, and there's a, there's a variety of reasons for that. So yeah, we've talked about um, this a little bit in the past, right? It, right, right. So the, the, the farmers, you know, the, the real root of the problem is that the farmers don't have the incentive or the protection to grow the premium tobacco products. And so that, that's the, that's the real issue here is, um, you know, the farmers don't have the security, uh, to step in and grow it. And so, you know, in a lot of, a lot of other, um, you know, uh, plants that are, that are grown in the United States, you know, the government offers subsidies, uh, or they offer price protection. And so let's say if the price gets so low, well, the government says, you know what, we'll, we'll guarantee that we'll buy it at this low price just so you can at least count on having that you know, if the, if the bottom falls out. 
And the thing is, as the government has gotten more uh, proactive against the, you know, with the anti-tobacco stuff, those those incentives are gone now uh, for even the premium tobacco growers. And so, um, you know, a, a farmer, you know, there there's a lot less risk in a farmer. You know, let's say, you know, you've got this piece of land and, oh, well, you know, I can grow tobacco, which is not protected and, you know, heavily regulated. Or I can go over here and grow soybeans, which is, you know, protected not as regulated and used, you know, all over the world. And sure. so, uh, you know, and is, and is very much encouraged. X amount of property, X amount of crop. You got to figure well, it's out an what, opportunity yeah, cost, right? You know, cost, yeah. yeah, exactly. It's like, well, I can, you know, go through all this hassle and make this stuff that I've done my entire life. And my grandfather did and his father did and all this other stuff. Or I can switch over to this other thing, which is much less labor intensive, uh, a lot less overhead. Uh, the government loves it. And, you know, I, I just don't have to go through the headaches of the other. And so right. it's just really, um, From this, the farmer's this really tough it balance. becomes a no, a no brainer. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. It, well, and these are business people, you right, know, a lot exactly. of, a lot of folks, you know, again, we, you, again, on, on country cry radio, we were very proud. We don't get into politics and all that, but you know, these are business people. They're making business decisions. And so, you know, what's a business person do? Well, I mean, they got to feed their family and pay the rent and, you know, pay off their um, you know, the machinery that they've loaned, leased out and all this other stuff. And so they, you know, they've got to, they've got to make money. And, um, and so the margins on these issues, these products are very, you know, inc incredibly important. And when they don't have the margin, you know, because of all the, all the regulation, then they, they don't have any incentive to grow that particular product. All right. So this might be a dumb question, but if you go, there are no stupid questions, just stupid. people. Well, then this is coming from a stupid person. <laughs> but, but so if, if, if that's the case, if, if the idea is that, you know, the industry has shifted. So getting this particular leaf in bulk is just not feasible. Do we see kind of a shift to kind of small batch type of growth in this particular leaf that may not be enough to you know provide a, a source for mcclellan but for individual blenders might be something there the, the, at, the, at a premium the problem the problem with that is you know well there's a there's a two-front problem on on one you know the really uh, the most skilled blenders in the world people like mike mcneil you know he's going to look at it and and say um you know there's not enough tobacco out there to justify going, you know, it, 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 there's not enough tobacco out there to assure you that you're going to find enough to even make it worth it. Yeah. You know huh. what I mean? And so he, he, uh, talking to him today, it was really funny. He said, you know, it's kind of like going, going into a bar and, and going with the intent of, you know, finding a girl to date. Right. And he said, okay, it, it it's like going in there, but you know, you know that even if you went into a bar full of beautiful women, that only a couple would be for you potentially, right? But he said, imagine walking into that, into that bar and then the guy at the door says, oh, by the way, you know, 68% of the women just left. So like you're walking into this bar and, and you're, you know, it, your, your chances already went way down. And, right, right. and then you are, you also know that like, even with whatever is left, it's, it's going to be very, it, it's just, the odds are not good. <laughs> it's basically right, right. what he's saying. Right. And so, um, you know, I, I think, um, that, you know, you're going to find that the folks that are really in the industry that are trying to make their living off this thing, they're just not going to be able to do it. Um, and then on top of that, you talk about small batch craft right, yeah, stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, the, 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 cards are against that right now because of the current regulatory climate. And so, you know, right now it's really difficult for people to come out and say, Hey, this is our new Christmas blend, or this is our holiday, uh, you know, St. Patrick's blend or whatever, because they, you know, the, the, this, um, ongoing stuff, they're not, it, it's not a good environment for limited time, small batch tobacco right now. Yeah, so, no, that makes sense. So it, it's, you know, I, I think the future for this kind of thing is just really, um, really muddy and, and just very, um, very unclear. All right. So let's talk about the end products though. So does this, does, I mean, like you said, this isn't going to impact as much their tin as it does their blending. And I realize that's kind of two different Cur paths. Currently. Yeah. Currently. And, and, and down the road that could change, right. you know, it, and, and will change frankly, just because we know where this is heading. But, uh, but yeah, currently it's the bulk. Frog stuff. Warden. 
Frogmorton's safe for, for now. For <sighs> All now. right, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I, had to, I had to breathe for a little now. easy there for a second. Yeah, and, and and yeah, I know we had so many people who were like, are they are they not making cellar anymore? Uh-huh, not making uh-huh. you know frog across the pond or you know uh, 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 on the bayou anymore? Because we lost one of the frogmorton. We did, last year. we did uh, actually because of the uh, the Syrian Latakia. But um, but yeah, you know the ten tobaccos are they're they're safe for now. They are safe for now. But um, Christmas blends. Uh, Christmas blends, of course, uh, the holiday spirit will still have that. Okay. Um, you know, but, cr- Christmas cheer, of course, ended last year. Mm-hmm. That was the, the last year that we would ever have Christmas cheer again. Uh, thanks to our, our regulatory environment. Um, but, um, uh, yeah, holiday spirit, uh, you know, back, back in the fold, uh, some of those real, uh, heavily sought after, uh, oriental mixtures, you know, again, uh, readily available 40th anniversary, uh, readily available, uh, you know, their, their new anniversary tobacco. And so we, we've got some of their, some of their most, you know, famous, uh, venerated popular blends that are going to be available. Um, but, um, notable tens that may not be available in the near future. Um, none, none uh, on the, on the horizon, on the immediate horizon. On the immediate horizon. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it really does come to, you know, the bulk, which impacts and, and specifically, At- you guys, the, it, the, the local blenders and the local, sh- local shops. It does. And so what, what you're going to find is a lot of folks, um, sitting behind the counter in my shoes in the, in the blender, the small time blender shoes. Um, you know, we're, if, 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 if you're a retailer and you depend on, you know, McClellan products, all of a sudden your formulas are going to have to change or you're going to have to discontinue some tobaccos. And so that's, you know, going to affect, uh, you know, people like me and, and other blenders across the country, uh, which I think will be, will be interesting. So, 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 so what do I need know. to stock up on here? I'm not going to tell you, you should buy it all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. uh, yeah, we're not going to say on air, but you're going to tell me like, right after we're like, I know. Yeah. <laughs> man, put, no, it up, it, put it up on eBay. We, you know, get and, you to sign it too. And, it's and, like this, this, this blend is out of stock, <laughs> never seen again. And it's been signed by John David Cole. I know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the bag will be signed, uh, by me no it you know it's one of those things you know what we're gonna have to kind of pivot in a few of our uh recipes and so will other blenders across the country but uh you know we're committed to to making outstanding top quality tobaccos and we'll use uh the most premium ingredients we can find uh historically those have been um you know many of those have come from companies like mcclellan uh and and you know as far as the stuff that they continue to produce we'll we'll continue to because we mm-hmm. believe in mcclellan we love them and we we really think it's important during this season uh if you are a pipe smoker and love american companies um we we encourage you to support mcclellan right now because this is a, a difficult season for them they they just removed uh some of their best sellers off the you know off the off the market and so um it's really important but um, you know, it, it's it's just interesting if you look at what's happening in the tobacco, uh, you know, the premium pipe tobacco kind of environment, the climate that we're seeing. Um, you know, M- Mike was explaining this to me. I just think it's so fascinating. You know, 30 years ago, you know, they they would they were very meticulous about how they harvested premium tobacco leaf. And so let's say let's say they've got a field of Virginia tobacco. OK, and I'm sure I'm butchering this. I'd love for Mike to. Um, you know, correct me after this, and we come out with some revisions next week just to just to clear it up. But we have Mike on I'm the a, show. I'm gonna tell you, I'd, I'd love that. Yeah, yeah my, Mike would be a great to have on the show. But in my own ham-fisted way, I'm gonna try to reiterate kind of what he said. He, you know, it's like they used to go through these fields, and you know, they'd work them over. They'd, you know, on let's say they go out on a Monday, and they pull all the ripe, you know, leaves that are turned just the right color, and uh, you know, have just uh, just the perfect. Uh, shade, you know, they they would pull all those out, and they'd wait a few days, and they'd go walk the walk the you know uh, the the ground again, and they'd pull the pull the next batch of leaves out, and they'd do that several times. They might even do it up to five times. You know, think a think about what it would take to go through a field of tobacco and hand pick these leaves for um you know for the ripest uh, leaves, the ones that have the most consistency to to you know cull the ones that you know are eat up with different. Uh, beetles or whatever, you know, I mean, the, the care that went into doing this. And yeah. so, you know, as time has gone on over, you know, the past 25, 30 years, um, just as the markets changed, the, you know, the, again, we're talking about businesses here. And so they're getting squeezed in all these different places due to uh, regulations and demand and market forces. And so, you know, as, as that's changing, um, the, the companies and, or the growers are actually having to, to adjust the way they're harvesting this stuff. And so they can't afford to send someone out in the field every week to go, uh, you know, hand pick these things. And so, 
so so what they're doing is they're actually machine uh, harvesting these leaves, right? The the leaves are getting machine harvested, and and what that means is that they don't discriminate between the ripe and the non-ripe. They don't uh, discriminate yeah. between the quality and the and the the you know the low quality. Um, and so so you've got these you know mass batches of leaves that are being pulled into each batch. They're not even really being aged, and then and then you know before they're aged, you know, you've got ripe leaves mixed with green leaves and then they're going straight into being flu cured, you know? And so you've got this stuff that's just, it, it's just, it's just not, it's not the premium tobacco that we're used to. And because the market forces aren't there uh, in the, in the financial environment, um, you know, the, the farmers just don't really have a, um, an incentive to, to, to do it the, the good old way anymore. And so you're, you know, you're going to, find less and less certainly in america less and less of the uh, of the real quality stuff yeah. does this in any way impacts the cigar industry it it doesn't um you know at least currently you know there are some cigars that of course um you know have pipe tobacco in a matter of fact we actually talked about that last week i think but um but yeah you know cigar leaf is really a totally different animal um see that's know, that's that's the thing because i mean we yeah. talk about kind of you know uh creating a, a better regulatory environment for there to be the source materials that support this industry and i feel like if if the pipe if the cigar industry was hit there'd be a little bit more rumblings in terms of the big big, big backing and big support what what's what's interesting you know is the which is unfortunate. We're 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 incredibly proud of our current pipe culture, right? Big time. I mean, that, you, Country Squire Radio would not be here, yeah. right, if it weren't for the renaissance we're experiencing in the pipe world, mm -hmm. and and we're very proud of that. But you know, if, if you talk to someone of you know, of course, Mike, we sound like Mike's, we, we make Mike sound like he's this old guy. He's only 61. I mean, he's, he's a spring chicken, you know? So, I mean, these are not, <laughs> these are not old people we're talking about, but you know, it, just but Mike, young. but Mike did come up and, you know, even though he's, you know, not a really old guy, like he did come up in a different era, right? These are, right, he, yeah. he came up and he learned the trade when, when the, the environment was very much different, you know, back in the, in the fifties and sixties, you know, they, they would actually, you know, you go through hand pick these tobacco leaves. They would hand bunch them together and then auction off the best stuff at these government auctions that were government supported. Um, and and so you had these really, um, you know, uh, incredibly high quality venues where people were bidding on the best leaf out there. Matter of fact, you should do this. You should go and Google uh, 1950s or 1960s tobacco auctions. Yeah, you just just do that on your on your spare time uh, if you're listening, and, and you'll be you'll be amazed to see like these black and white pictures of people walking around these old barns, like these big leaves, and everything, and 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 they're these hand hand bunched leaves of tobacco <laughs> that are being you know bid on because these the big guys they're out there saying, man, that's gonna make the best pipe tobacco, right? Right, right, right. And so you got to think, you know, I mean. Uh, 50 years ago, there were 57 million pounds of tobacco grown in the United States that was consumed just for pipe tobacco. Okay, just pipe tobacco, 57 million pounds. Man. This year, 1.4 million pounds. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, I mean, that that's your difference, right? And so as as we talk about the renaissance that uh, in pipe smoking that we're so proud of, and, right. we're, and we're really, frankly, Bo, you and I, we we're very fortunate to be a part of, you yeah. know, in a very intimate way. And uh, it, we're, you know, we're very proud of that. Um, you know, we're still talking about a, a niche industry c compared to certainly what it was. And, and most of that now is, um, it, you know, has gone over to the, to the cigar. Well, and, that, and it is funny. Cause I mean, you think about, it, it really is about perspective. Cause I remember yeah. Uh, yeah. A, a year or so ago, you and I, I uh, won't go into the details, but we were sitting down with the meeting with, with, uh, some, some industry Titans and going over some of the numbers and such within, you know, uh, with what statistics were showing in terms of pipe smokers and that sort of thing. And I remember seeing the numbers and be like, oh, dang, that's that's really good. But then they showed like what it used to be. Yeah. And so like they were looking yeah. at this as if it was bad because of that history that existed before. And that's I'm, exactly I'm like, right. You know, I guess I guess it's just because, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit fresher into to looking at things. But, you know, it, it, I can understand somebody who's been in this industry for a couple of decades, how they might feel very a, a little bit more down, whereas overall, uh, you know, certainly over the present past news, notwithstanding, right. It's, right. it's, uh, it's you know, a, the, the past 15 years in the pipe world have been very encouraging. Right. Exactly. You know? I mean, that, that's the exciting thing is that we've seen such a, such a renaissance where, you know, just not just in the tobacco side and the carving side, for goodness sakes. I mean, think about all the great American artisans that have come out of, uh, the past 15, 20 years that, um, should be incredibly proud of what they do. Um, you know, the pipe smoking thing we've talked about even, 
uh, like on our, um, you know, archetypes and our, our pipe culture episodes it is it, the pipe smoking is more of this, um, it's part of this greater continuity, you know, meta narrative thing of people trying to trying to find things that, you know, return them to the past or something that's more timeless, something that's more stable, um, something that's more meaningful. It, it, it's a part of all that. Right. I mean, it, we're seeing that just across, you know, that this is connected just to the small batch whiskey, to the straight razor shaving and all that, all the other stuff that mm -hmm. we're seeing right now. You know, these are all connected in some way. And so, um, you know, we're proud of that. We're happy about that. But but yeah, for someone, you know, like Mike, that's been in the the industry for, you know, 40 years. Um, you know, you just have to think like, um, you know, it, it's got to be discouraging to know, just to know what good leaf was really like and to know how frustrating it is today to, to, to not even be able to find enough to make a bulk red Virginia cake that is, that is of, of the quality that, that they're used to. And so, you know, and, and what, what my, I was like, Mike, what, what do you want me, if, if I can tell our listeners anything tonight about, you know, kind of what's going on, what would you like me to tell them? What was, is that one thing? And he said, <laughs> he said, um, he would rather die than put out something that is inferior, man. And so he will, he, he said he would refuse to, um, to put out an inferior tobacco product that doesn't meet his standards. And that if that, you know, if it comes to where he can't anymore, then he won't. And, and he is that committed to, to high quality, uh, high quality tobacco products. And so, you know, that's the thing that they, they were on the cusp, you know, any other tobacco company probably could have taken, uh, some of their, uh, some of their, you know, experimental blends and said, you know what, we'll make that the new 5,100. That's, that's something we'll, you know, do people will understand, you know, we're doing the best we can. The leaf isn't there anymore, but, um, you know, people will get that. Oh, well, it's just not going to be like the good old days. And, and Mike said, that's just not good enough, you know? Mm. And, and so they are, they are committed to, uh, to only doing it if they can feel like they did it right. And, um, you know, and, and so the future's, you know, uncertain, but, um, you know, they're, they're looking, they're working really hard to try to get, uh, get the best that's out there. And, um, yeah, I believe in the folks at McClelland. I really do. They make, uh, some of the best tobaccos in the world. Um, again, I think Mike would fight you on this, but, if I said this, but I, you know, I think he's, um, I think he's probably the, the best American blender, you know, historically that we've ever seen. Um, and so, uh, you know, certainly his body of work over the years. Right. And, um, you know, I just, um, you know, I, I, I believe in them. I know, um, that they've got uh, a bright future, but it's, uh, you know, it's going to be, going to be hard going forward. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. Well, and to the, and to the folks that it impacts the, you know, the, the local mom and pop shop blenders and, and that sort of thing. I mean, one, one thing I would, would just want to say in terms of encouragement is that, you know, a lot of innovation can happen in access, but a lot of innovation can happen, uh, when, when, you know, when the limitations exist. In fact, some of the best innovation happens when limitations are forced upon you. You're, you're exactly right. That That's one thing about this kind of stuff that, that you have to remember, right? So everyone, you know, think about last year when these FDA, you know, regulations came out and everyone was going around wearing sackcloth and gnashing their teeth, you know. You know, the the cream rises, right? The cream rises to the top. Exactly. And, and it is an opportunity to say, look, how are we going to innovate? How are we going to raise our, raise our expectations? How are we going to, um, you know, make our game better? And, and so, you know, will there be a pipe industry on the other side of, of this kind of stuff? You know, yeah, th there's, there's going to be, and they're going to be players and they're going to be dynamic players. And they're going to, the people that are going to be left in the industry are going to be, the folks that are willing to scrap and innovate and be um, creative. And, um, and, and, you know, we, we're, we're looking forward to seeing that we're looking forward to being a part of that. And uh, is the pipe industry going to continue to evolve and look different? Yeah. But, um, but it can also be good. And so we'll continue to fight for the, um, the pastime that we love. And uh, in the meantime, we'll, we'll drink from single malt to a, uh, to venerated tobacco that we, uh, that we love and cherish 5,100. Yes. Cheer, cheers to the 5,100. Cheers to 5,100. We knew ye well. We knew ye well. That's right. <laughs> mm. Ah, and, uh, and delicious scotch to be enjoyed along with it. That's right. Well, hey, you know what? Uh, if you've got some 5,100, this is it, man. This, this is your bowl right here and now. And you want to make sure, like, you're going to smoke it. Like, it is your last One of your bowl. remaining bowls that you have. Man, right. you know when you right. pack that pipe with 5,100, 
some of the last 5,100 on the entire planet, you're not going to just want to throw that into a pipe that you're not going to be able to get a good, clean smoke, to be able to get every single last flavor and to truly savor that smoke. <laughs> You're not going to put that in some, you know, uh, clay pipe that was your grandfather's grandfather's no, so, and so, caked up to the max may, where you may, could yeah, barely maybe, even pack a leaf into it. Right. So some some pipe that's got so much, you know, cherry Cavendish residue no! built up on the side, right? Blasphemy! You're going to put that in a clean, yes. uh, fresh, pure yes, uh, corn cob pipe, of course, from our friends at Missouri. Missouri Hallelujah. Yes, sir. That's right. <laughs> Missouri Meerschaum. Look, great corn cob pipes. You get a good, clean, cool smoke every single time. It's a great way to enjoy uh, uh, 5100 or any tobacco that is uh, that, that is out there. Uh, you might not want to smoke 5100. You might want to put it up. You might want to just enjoy uh, your, your favorite tin or your favorite blend here from the Country Squire. But uh, be sure that you're doing so in a Missouri Meerschaum pipe. And uh, man, you know, the great thing about Missouri Meerschaum is that uh, not only do they have so many different sizes and shapes, you could do some things like customized pipes. For example, we've got custom corn cob pipes on the auction right now. That's right. And uh, and so if you've got a if you've got a Missouri Meerschaum pipe, you can do your own little custom job on it as well. So head over to Country Square Radio to check out some different holiday themed designs uh, that might inspire you. But uh, but be sure if you've got a custom corn cob pipe of your own, be sure to smoke it this week. Uh, we'd love to retweet it out to show the good folks at Missouri Meerschaum uh, their thanks, our thanks for them supporting this show. That's right. That's right. All right, man. Pipe question of the week. Now, this is a great question. I mean, we are we are really on the tobacco train tonight, big time. Uh, and this is definitely kind of continuing on that thought path here from Dave Miller. He says, after hearing about the blend White Rose, which is going to be fine, we anticipate being able to continue to make white rose. Woohoo! <laughs> All right. After hearing about your blend, white rose, he says in parentheses, I think sounds Bo just wet himself. <laughs> <laughs> Very happy. Now it's a scotch. I spilled. I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he says uh, the white uh, white rose, which sounds amazing. I've been toying around with applying toppings at home, specifically honey, uh, without revealing any trade secrets. Can you go into a bit more detail about how you can use honey as a topping? I would certainly love to hear a show uh, solely dedicated to DIY toppings and catering casings at some point. Uh, everyone knows how to throw a couple of tobaccos together to make a new blend, but I'm totally interested in how one goes about making their own toppings and casings at home. Man, great question. You know, this is something we've talked about um, a, a little bit on the air before, um, you know, just flavoring your own tobaccos at home. It, um, you know, it, it, is it, is it, uh, do you have all the stuff that you need to do it at the, at the house? You know, can it be necessarily as sophisticated as it might be if you were, uh, one of the industry titans like at McClelland or Cornell and Deal or, uh, you know, Mac Barron or whoever. And, um, you know, maybe you can't get quite as specific with your flavoring, but uh, but there's certainly ways to do it. And, uh, you know, a, a lot of um, a lot of the vehicle for these different flavorings becomes uh, essentially just a, what we call a syrup or, or what you might know as a, a simple syrup, you know, something that, mm. um, you know, you're going to take a kind of a sugary <laughs> sugar water, a sugar water, yeah. it's just sugar water that's boiled, right? It becomes this kind of uh, viscous solution that is, uh, is really, uh, it works well as a topping uh, on really any food product. And, and then you apply it to tobacco. Um, and then, you know, with this kind of uh, nice sugary syrup, you know, you may want to put honey like, uh, like we, um, you know, like, like you taste in a white rose, or you might, uh, want to put some cherry extract or, or even, uh, you know, maybe boil down some, uh, you know, some of your favorite fruit and then add that to the simple syrup that, you know, whatever that, um, that liquid is, of course, you don't want to use the, the actual, you know, orange or the actual raspberries or whatever it is, but, you know, take that, uh, take that liquid, add it to the syrup and, and, and whip you something up. What, what we've talked about before on air in episodes we've done on this, uh, in the past is that, you want to you want to be really really conscious of of molding in this kind of environment. So this is something you're not going to do a whole bunch of and keep on hand forever. You know mm -hmm. you might you're gonna you're gonna um you know experiment a little bit, right? You know you know whip you up some of your little uh, concoction, uh, mix it up you know in your kitchen, let it sit a couple days, and, and enjoy you a couple bowls of it. You know, but this is not something uh, just from a safety standpoint that you're going to want to just do. You know. Uh, pounds and pounds of and sell to your friends that would be illegal uh, all that other kind of stuff you know th this is this is just stuff to experiment with in little batches but i think you can have a lot of fun with it and uh you know certainly um you know that simple syrup with some of your favorite flavorings uh kind of mixed in there um you know you know I, I think that's that's the really 
you know, best place to start. Yeah. All right, man. Yeah. That's a great, great. It's a lot of have. fun with that. You know, you can even, I mean, think about anything uh, that has a really interesting, potent flavor that can be boiled with water. Uh, and then that, that water, ex, you know, after being sifted out, being, uh, you know, mixed in some kind of a, kind of a syrupy solution and then adding that to your favorite tobacco, letting it dry out a couple of days and then, and then, and then smoking it up. You know, I, I think there's something that's, uh, that's really fun and beautiful about that. So, um, you never know, you might be the next, uh, might be the next Greg Peace. Hey, <laughs> and a uh, great question, Dave. And, uh, let us know, by the way, if you, if you do kind of decide to dabble, let us know how it goes for you. We'd love to hear that and, uh, and share your story on the show as well. And by the way, if you've got a pipe quest of the week, you can send it in show at country squire radio dot com quick fire questions all right man quick fire questions brought to us by our new sponsor tin society uh tin society.com is a place you want to go and man tin society is an awesome awesome service we'll talk about that in just a minute that's right now we've got some uh quick fire questions in from ghosts of pompeii that's right uh ghost pompeii uh continuing on providing us with some great quick fire questions these are gonna make you hungry and make you think and make a question reality. Are you ready? <laughs> yeah, bring it on. Astronaut or deep sea deep sea? Uh, astronaut or deep sea diver? Uh, astronaut. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a space guy. You know, I like I like uh, I like space. So I'm a space guy too. I mean, you know, Star Wars um, has has had a uh, deep and emotional impact on my life. Uh, and and generally speaking, I'm because sp space is like so far reaching. It's it's vast. Yeah. It's beyond. It's like yeah. you could never 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 get enough of it. No, that's right. But there's just so much of like the sea that is unexplored, like within our own planet. You, you, know? you know, you are right about that. It is when you think about the depth of our own ocean and and how we you know as as technologically advanced as we are in 2018, um, we still don't know so much about it. Yeah, I I I, I, I get that. I, I kind of. I don't know. I mean, overall, it's probably astronaut, but I, I just, I hate to just throw aside deep sea diver because I do feel like we overlook, you know, what's below for what's above sometimes. I'd like to, I'd like to see, I'd like to be the first person to smoke a pipe in space. <gasps> can we make in, in your lifetime? Can we make that happen? No, certainly. Okay. Not. Probably. <laughs> uh, AC, DC or AC, DC, uh, AC or DC. Uh, AC. Yeah. yeah. I, I, you know, I don't really know the difference between, uh, alternating current and direct current so I, i'll just go with ac because it is reminds me of air conditioner uh wait <laughs> i thought this was like a power thing is that not a power thing yeah alternating current and direct current okay oh oh okay but ac right. not not air conditioning right okay i'm gonna go with acdc the band <laughs> okay uh, fair enough pulled pork or beef brisket gosh don't make me choose uh pulled pork but but man is it close is yeah. it is it really really close I mean, so is, is pulled pork, is that because we're in Mississippi? Like, I feel like different areas. Yeah, di different regions of the country have their favorite barbecue, right. right? So, you know, every time I go, you know, back to Texas to visit family, it's more beef-based out there, right? It's you're brisket talking, you're talking brisket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, if you're in Memphis, you're talking ribs. Yeah, you're talking and ribs. Louis, uh, yeah, ribs and well. you know, and then and then you know, and, and in Memphis, they do their fair share of the uh, of the pulled pork also. But that's yes. that's really. You know, uh, we that's kind of our bread and butter here, oh. at least in our part of the country. So, yeah. Um, yeah. But I, you know, I, between the two, I'll do pulled pork. Yeah. I mean, definitely pulled pork between the two. Although I do like that pork brisket. It's not mentioned here because he only mentions the beef brisket. The pork brisket. You know about that? Oh, pork yeah. Brisket. I forgot about that. Pork yeah. You got to remember that pork brisket. Yeah. That's, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be, I'll, I'm not going to hold my breath for uh, trying that pork brisket. Was that was that with you or was that with Caleb? No, that was definitely with me. All right, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a, no, a I, I former episode, former joke, probably I, a former quick fire question. I remember it well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the rapture or alien abduction? Oh uh, gosh, <laughs> wow. Um, so it's the end of the world as we know it. Okay, so I'm going to go with ooh. Yeah, well, you'd rather be raptured. Than I'd rather be raptured, but but as a good as a as a good uh, reformed person, I, I don't believe in the rapture <laughs> as as an amillennialist, and so I, I'm going to go with the alien abduction, the kind kind where they invite you to their ship. Yeah, and they well, yeah, where you get to go secrets. in and right that you know no probing. Maybe we have like a I don't know like a fiesta party or something. Yeah, yeah, F fiesta with with aliens with aliens. Right, it could, it could be fun. You know, I'm going to go with the fiesta with aliens too. That sounds amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds amazing. Uh, all right, Dr. Pepper or Mr. Pibb? Dr. Pepper. Yeah, without question. Mr. Pibb's gross. Nah, it's not gross. Nah, it's it's gross. just not Dr. Pepper. Uh, well, Dr. Pepper's not that great, if I'm being honest either. But, but, but all right, look, isn't, isn't there like what the heck's wrong with you? Cherry Dr. Pepper's all right. <laughs> if it's like mixed with ice cream, 
You got to really do some stuff to make me like Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper's gross. They're both gross. You're gross. Dr. Dr. Pepper Pepper wouldn't want you anyway. Let me tell you something. While Mr. Pibb was like (laughs) sitting back on his couch, Dr. Pepper (laughs) went out and got his medical degree. So I'm going to go with Dr. Pepper for the effort. I just just want to point out the fact that my future wife is in the room and she's looking horrified right now because you dissed (laughs) Dr. Pepper. And and I I, I tend to be on her team. (laughs) Well, I, actually, I'm very much on her team. <laughs> I, was about, I was about to say, I'm about to say, there ain't no tin. You haven't locked it. it down yet. Right. You better get your words right. <laughs> <laughs> well, going these quick fire questions. Uh, uh, great quick fire questions coming in from Ghost of Pompeii, and this segment of, is brought to you by uh, the Tin Society. That's right. Now, TinSociety.com is a place you want to go. This is an awesome service delivered. Pipe, t- uh, pipe tobaccos right to your doorstep. Premium stuff uh, you get on a monthly basis. And there's a wonderful deal deal here for uh, Country Squire Radio listeners. 20% off and a free Missouri Meerschaum pipe whenever you use the code SQUIRE. Now, a lot of you, uh, you know, you've, you've got your sellers. Uh, some of you are very proud of your sellers. Some of you, uh, you know, yeah, we, there's room to grow. There's room to grow. Yeah. Both of you can benefit <laughs> from this service. So be sure to check them out. Again, that's tinsociety.com. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's it's amazing service. We love these guys. And uh, man, just, you know, the cool thing is I, I should have mentioned it uh, before, but, um, you know, with all of our sponsors, Missouri Meerschaum Tin Society, available at countrysquireradio.com. We actually have direct links there and you can see their logo. That's right. It's just a cool little logo. Dude, it's wicked, man. I kind of want a shirt. I, I, love, I love what they're doing. It's just such a great model. So, you know, there's, an infinite amount of tins out there, uh, whether it be from, uh, you know, people like Cornell and Deal, McClellan, Mac Barron, Dunhill, uh, Orlick. I mean, just the the list goes on and on. Every time you shop for tins, you're overwhelmed. And and what the fine folks at the Tin Society have done is they've kind of curated this for you. And so they're offering you a box once a month. You get, uh, you know, samples of different tobaccos where you don't have to commit to a whole tin, but you do get the opportunity to smoke you know, three or four bowls of, of really premium pipe tobacco from different tins that you might try. Mm-hmm. It's just a great way to try, um, you know, a variety, uh, see what you like. And then that way, if you like it, you commit to a whole tin, get you one, um, and, and then, and then try the next bowl. So what they've got going is really golden, uh, great opportunity for, for country squire radio listeners to hop on board. And again, we encourage you to go to tin society.com. That's right. All right, so listener feedback this week. Man, I want to actually, if it's all right with you, do something a little crazy here. Um, t- oh. <laughs> mm. Live on air as we do this. Uh, typically, of course, listener feedback, we, we pull from your emails. Yeah. We've got Facebook comments. We've actually got a backlog of great stuff that you guys have sent in. We appreciate it. But given the subject matter we've been discussing tonight, uh, I actually put out at the beginning of the show uh, for our listeners to actually send in questions as we were going live. Yeah. So if you're cool with it, I think for listener feedback this week, uh, we're going to do things a little bit different. Actually take listener feedback directly from the audience. Yeah, from that's some great. Of these tweets that have started to come in. Yeah, sure. Uh, now, the first one up, uh, this comes in from uh, uh, at C-D-Umo. C-D-Umo. <laughs> I, I mispronounced names, spilled drink. I think Peppy Joe's predictions are coming true about how this uh, episode is going to go. If, if we started late, uh, you mispronounced a drink and spilled a er, mispronounced a name and spilled a drink. Everything's right in the world. That's right. That's yeah. right. Uh, he says. So for those of us who do blend, what is a good alternative at this point for fifty one hundred? There isn't one. Mm. I, I'll, I'll I'll be real honest. Um, you know there 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 is not one. Um, you know it, other fine companies make fine products. Um, you know you can look for. Uh, darker Virginias uh, with, uh, you know, folks, I would start probably with a product from Cornell and Deal. Um, you know, there's stuff from Peter Stokeby that's really good. Um, there is no, no close approximation to, to the, you know, to, to what 5100 is. There's just not. And so uh, we're all kind of starting from a, from a new, uh, you know, a new baseline. Here. It's a brave new world. Yeah, it, it is. Yeah. Your, your, your blends are going to, uh, they're going to change. They are. Yeah. All right. Uh, next one from Brandon uh, Williamson. And we kind of mentioned this earlier, but he asked, does the red Virginia stuff affect uh, frog Morton cellar? Not currently. Yeah, not currently. Eventually some of this stuff will catch up with the tins, uh, but, but it currently has not. And we don't anticipate it to for, for quite some time. Yeah. All right. So this one comes in from Chase Abels. He says, does McClellan pulling out of the red Virginia market, make it easier for someone else to keep it going? Uh, like, could one company claim monopoly on any remaining producers, uh, only making one or two blends with it, and so to keep the strain of the plant growing and alive? Yeah, it's a it's an interesting point. Of course, you know, McClellan they they have kind of the American market, not cornered, but you know, they just they have access to the best stuff in America, and so if their people can't find it, I mean, you know, Mike and Mary, they, these these are these are this is a couple that you know they have 
personal relationships with the brokers that know exactly where this stuff is grown. Right. I mean, mm-hmm. they, they can go put their hands on it. They, they've, you know, these, these are the folks they vacation with. Right. I mean, right, they, right. you know, they, they know exactly, you know, the farmer, Jim Bob down, you go down the dirt road and you take a left past the oak tree. He's got this batch and it's really good. And I think I can get you a couple barrels of that. Like, that's the kind of relationship that they have that really no other company in America has has had. Gosh, that kind um, of relationship building is kind of a lost art. It, right? it is. Yeah, and that's yeah. the thing, you know, even talking to Mike about it today, um, you know, the, the, those brokers and, and the people that uh, find this stuff, they just they just gotten out of the business or died. I mean, it's just a lost art. It, it really is. Yeah. It really is. And so, um, you know, folks from other uh, but, you know, their tobacco, of course, has grown all over the world now. There's a uh, leaf in Africa, South America, uh, you know, India, the Middle East, uh, you know, and so folks will try to continue to source stuff. But but the Red Virginias that you'll find um, from other companies are are not going to taste um, not going to taste taste like the stuff we're used to from McClellan. All yeah. right. Uh, Hawk to the Love Doctor is asking, what about 2035 Dark Navy Flake? Actually, not sure about 2035. So but I, I can look into that for you, Hawker. All right. And then uh, uh, this one, I think, is is probably one of the most important questions. I, I can't believe that I lost it. Uh, I, although I will I will give a shout out to Dr. Allen. said pulled pork is a stable here in Ontario, Canada. <laughs> uh, c- Canadians don't eat barbecue. What are you talking about? Apparently now, they do. No, come on, man. I think he's just messing <laughs> with us. That's not a Canadian thing. Gene Boker. Uh, says, Y'all got Canadian bacon up there. You know what we call that down here? Ham. Ham. That's not, that's, <laughs> that ain't bacon. Come on, brother. Gene Boker uh, says uh, he hopes it doesn't impact the 40th anniversary. Uh, he's uh, also heard problems with Carolina Gold. Uh, the uh, the yeah the 40th anniversary uh, currently is 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 safe. So um, you know there there is plenty of stock on that currently. Yeah. All right. So uh, like I said, man. This is the question. I think the one that uh, for most people, it's been keeping them up at night from the very moment they saw the news. Uh, this is what they want to know. This is coming in from uh, Byron Fiss, who again is speaking for the masses. He asked, how is the Red Virginia crisis going to affect Old Charter 8 and a barbecue episode of Country Squire? Radio? <laughs> it doesn't all go well. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. Hopefully, unimpacted. Yeah. Unimpacted. I, I think, you know, Old Charter 8, I, you know, I don't know. It's It's got a... It, it, it's it's probably got a bright future considering you know where things are going in our country where people are going to need a lot of old charter <laughs> and uh and, and to get through you know it's a it's a it's a it's aged eight seasons right yeah, or, yeah, or, yeah. eight or, years or, or as they started referring to now at the at the package store next door uh eight days right uh, so yeah yeah it, it you know obviously it's got a place in our heart and so uh and as far as the barbecue pairing uh you know, I, I I don't know. I, it has personal significant place in our heart. Beyond that, just nothing good about it. I, I no quality, know. no taste. It's, really, <laughs> it's it's an awful, awful beverage, but it meant something to somebody who meant something to us. So that's why. <laughs> <laughs> that is why. But the barbecue episode on the other hand, that needs to happen. Well, that, that's going to happen. It, Mississippi is compared to hell sometimes, and it did snow here the other day. <laughs> it so, did snow here. Yeah, we'll we'll we'll, we'll see. <laughs> I think we I think we got it. I think we got it good. Um, all right. So I think, man, uh, I'll just do kind of a quick list right here. Um, uh, Russ Hicks, by the way, is putting out a list of McClellan blends that are currently affected. Um, having, thank, thank you, Russ. I'm, I'm sure, you know, having not double checked it, I'll go ahead and retweet it. If it's Russ. So, you know, we, we trust Russ with, uh, with, with our lives, our bank accounts and uh, our, our social security numbers uh, <laughs> and our podcast and our podcast. That's right. <laughs> so whatever he says, uh, we were more than happy to go sign, but uh, thanks for that feedback. Like I said, it's a little bit different this week. We're, we're taking live feedback, given the fact that we were talking about something that is kind of breaking news uh, here within the industry and here on country Squire radio. Uh, but Hey, you know, normally we love getting in those, uh, those emails. We love getting in those iTunes reviews, especially it's a great way to help out the show. If you've not done so already head over to iTunes, write us a review. Uh, uh, by the way, if you are interested in helping out the show uh, for like, you know, a couple of shekels and such, we we, we love those shekels as well. We do. Uh, it's you a can, big part of uh, making the show happen. Exactly. If you go to patreon.com slash country squire radio, you can uh, support the show, buck an episode, become a patron, $3 to $5 to become an actual club member here, uh, which by the way, I'll just mention this to you. I emailed it to you before, but um, you know, we've got uh, <laughs> starting... As of uh, this this year, that's right. We, we now have our Squire level members uh, who've been with us for a year. Uh, they're they're about to get brass plaques here on the wall. Brass at, plaques at, at the, the country wall. Squire, yeah. and uh, and I can now confirm 
that Varge does want to be known as Varge the Pipe Pirate. The Pipe Pirate on his on plaque. Yes. No, that's right. That's right. So <laughs> everyone's got these regal names, you know, everything, you know, printed in brass, their full name, you know, no shortenings or hyphenations or anything. And and, and Varge is he he wants to be Varge. Look, here's the deal. Yeah. When when you make <laughs> when you make your pilgrimage, because that's the thing, many of you have made your pilgrimage over the last couple of years to come to the country squire from around the globe. Uh in in the near future, you'll actually be able to come up and see the wall of squire members. When you see Varge's name, you gotta you gotta just you know those little copper rubbings you gotta make a yeah, copper no, rubbing yeah, of yeah, that yeah that's right that's Varge, right. you know pappy joe yeah you have mark vv and they, like <laughs> like a lot of you know a lot of the uh the who's who russ is on there as well like, that's right. like a lot of the names that you hear on here that's you'll right. be able to actually you know do your copper rubbing of their names so uh, and, and and see it could uh your, your name could be one of those two oh here. that's exactly right. right now so that oh that's, that wasn't just last year that's exactly right so squire members uh I become a squire member this year and then this time next year you'll you'll be uh, you'll join. have your own brass plaque here at the uh, ye old pipe shop that's right that's right so, uh, so definitely do that you can find the information and more at countrysquireradio.com you can also keep up with us throughout the week week I'm at the real Bo York I'm at John David Cole or you can get us at the shop at, at underscore country squire and of course you can follow the show at squire radio as well. Uh, all that information and more can be found at countrysquireradio.com where you can tune in live on Monday nights. The show here starts at 8.30 Central Time. That's 6.30 Pacific, 9.30 Eastern at countrysquireradio.com. Well, man, happy one day early birthday. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I, pre I appreciate are that. Are you going to do anything special? Um, Y'all are going to do something special. I... Uh, you, you, your 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 fiance kind of gave me the look like I haven't planned anything. Yeah, you know, it, it, as <laughs> as long as I'm with her, I, I, I think it'll be great. But we had the yeah. we had we had the hats and everything. No, we did. You, you know, it's funny actually. The uh, the you know, I, I was thinking maybe I'd watch some football, but uh, the national championship game for college football is actually being played right now. Oh, who's winning the match? Uh, and it, the the match, Bo, is being uh, won by the University of Georgia currently. Uh, All right, the 13, Georgia Gators. Thirteen. The Georgia Gators are winning the. Uh, the the match through the, with their they have more wickets than the than the crimson Tide. yeah and if they yeah. catch the quidditch ball or i don't even know quidditch so i, I don't then, then right the, the it gets golden, the hockey puck the golden fly thing right that's that's right they catch, and they can fight like that's the thing if <laughs> if they can fight but if they break it up then somebody's got to make a three 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 throw, three throw. <laughs> <laughs> you idiot let's cut it let's cut it off there man let's go have a night see you brother thanks guys so much hope this, yeah, we hopefully this was informative thanks. happy birthday john david <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> oh man all right so we so had some confetti but it didn't full work. disclosure pulling <laughs> pulling the curtain back we had some confetti ready to go it did oh, not pop that's off that's funny uh, uh, uh. yeah <laughs> there it is <laughs> excellent I, i'm uh i'm tickled hey! it's, uh, yep it's is uh it, it's it's good to be with you tonight <laughs> <laughs> all right guys y'all have a great week see you soon <laughs> Happy birthday to you. <laughs>